Welcome to this introduction to Unix commands course. My name is Abhishek Salaria and I'll be your instructor for this course. The goal of the course is to provide theoretical as well as practical experience on different Unix commands. This course guides you step by step from having a no experience with Unix commands to use them like a pro. By the end of this course, you will master Unix commands and get more done in less time. Looking forward to see you guys in the course. CD command. CD command stands for change directory. With this command, we can change the current directory. Suppose we want to go inside this folder one. Then how we can do? We can do with the help of a CD command. Okay. So currently we are at the home folder. You can check it with the help of a ls command. Okay which we have already studied. So we can see currently we are at the home folder and this folder testing Unix command is present inside the desktop. So for going inside the desktop, what we are going to do, we are going to do CD and desktop. Either you are going to type desktop or what you can do is you can just type few words and press tab okay then tab will automatically write the existing words okay so now we are inside the desktop now we can again do ls command and we can see there is only one like folder present so we can do cd te and i am going to press the tab and it is going to automatically write write that now we can press the enter and we are inside this folder okay so now if you want to go to this home folder again what you can do you can just type cd then it will again get you back in that home folder or the first thing from where we started okay so we'll be again going to that directory so we can do cd desktop and again if you press the tab then automatically this will come like uh, only one folder is present so on pressing tab it will show that folder suppose there will be two or three folders then it is going to show you the options okay so tab is very helpful in these cases so we can press enter so it is now inside this folder okay we can just show hold the structure again okay now we can just go inside this folder 5 which is inside this folder 2 so what we can do cd folder again press the tab see we got all the options which one we want we want 2 so we are inside the folder 2 now we can again go to folder 5 now on pressing tab as only one folder is present it will directly map that folder now we can go here now we have learned how to go inside a folder but how to come back from that folder like from folder 5 if you want to go to folder 2 how you can do that so you can do with the help of cd dot dot okay so on pressing that you will be going to go to folder 2 okay so we can again move back to folder 5 so now we can just see this we are at this folder inside this folder suppose from this folder you want to go to folder 4 how we can do that you can you want to go directly to that folder so we know that we are inside this folder 5 so what we need to do we need to go back one folder so it we will come to this folder 2 now but we need to fall back one more time they come back to this test unix unix commands folder so what we can do slash we can do dash dash okay so we are currently at this folder if you want to check after like 
doing this slash you can just press tab so it will show you what is currently there in your folder like in this folder after going to this thing so we can see folder 1 folder 2 folder 3 is there so now we want to go to folder 1 so we can do folder 1 again we can press the tab it will show you all the things inside it so we'll be going to go to folder 4 so we can do folder 4 we can press the enter so now we are inside the folder 4 okay so that is how we can do all such operations with the help of a change directory command so that's all for cd command ls command ls command is used for listing out files as well as directories inside the current folder so we are currently in the folder testing unix commands so to print out the files as well as directories present inside it we can just type ls okay so see it printed everything present inside this folder suppose we want to print not only the items present inside this folder but as well as items inside it like folder 4 file 1 file x inside folder 1 and in for similarly for folder 2 and similarly for folder 3 so for that we can just type ls star so it will print out all the files present inside the current folder current folders as well as everything inside it okay so it will just go till level 1 like it won't print whatever is present inside folder 4 so it will just print whatever is inside this parent folder okay so now suppose we only want to print the directories with the help of a list command how we can do that ls dash d star slash so this will print out all the directories okay inside the current folder so we can see it printed folder 1 folder 2 as well as folder 3 now suppose we want to print only the files then how we can do that so we know that every file will be having some extension so we can do like ls star dot star so we can see it printed only the files now suppose we want to print only the files having the txt extension so how we can do that we can do with the help of ls star star is for any text then dot txt so what that means that list all the items that is having dot txt in the last so star means whatsoever is present there is no issue regarding that but it should contain dot txt in the last so what should it print it should print file x dot txt and file y dot txt so we can just see so yes it printed only these files suppose we want to print the file having bash as extension so how we can do that we can do ls star dot bash okay so it printed only that file now suppose we want to print the files having file at the starting so what we can do we can do ls file and star so it will print all the files which contains which starts with file and have anything after that okay so similarly if you know some substring like le inside the file so we can match with the help of that too so we can do ls it should have anything in starting or 
then it should have le in the middle and then it can have anything at the end so it will print all the files so that is how this ls command works cat command cat command stands for concatenation this is a common utility command of unix this is most frequently used command for adding the content to the file and also printing the content from a file okay so how this command works so firstly we are in this testing unix commands folder now how can we see the content of any file we can see with the help of cat command so we can do cat suppose we want to see the content of file x.txt we can just write that file x.txt so so this will write the content of file that is present in this file x.txt we can just see this is the content so it will output that content in this console okay now suppose we want to create a new file and add some content into it then how can we do that we can do cat then this closing arrow and then we can name the file whatever we want to create so we can just say new file dot txt okay now press the enter so we can just see it has created a file named new file dot txt now it is asking for what is the content inside it so you can just add the content this is new file okay you can press the enter if you want to add some other content so we can just add this is second line okay so once you are done adding you can just press the control and then press the t twice okay so this will add this content into this file we can just see the content has been added we can also see with the help of a cat command again so we can just say cat new file dot txt so we can see okay so what else we can do with the help of a cat command suppose we want to print these lines along with the numbers like this is at the line number one this is at the line number two then how we can do that we can do cat dash n then file name that is new file dot txt so we can see it is printing the line with the help of a number okay so the next thing that we are going to do is suppose we want to create a copy of some file then we can do cat whatever file we want to create a copy of like new file then we have want to create a copy copy new file file name so it has created one more file which is exact copy of this file okay so next thing we want to do is now suppose we want to copy multiple files into a single file then how we can do that we can do cat all the file names like file new file dot txt copy new file dot txt then this file name like like uh, compiled file dot txt maybe okay so what it will do it will create a compiled file that will have a content of both the files okay so it will have a content of both the files so that is how we are going to perform different operations with the help of a cat command hope everything is clear with this cat command grip command grip command stands for global regular expression print this command is used for finding a particular pattern in a file or a set of files and print the result accordingly okay so for this command i have already created a text file that we will be using for searching different types of patterns from this file okay and i have already added it into a different folders as per the commands we are going to use okay 
so we can start with the commands so i'll be just opening this file as well so that we can just see whatever we are going to do from here as well like if it's working fine or not so first thing suppose we want to search some word from this file like first name okay so for that we can just do grip what we are searching for first name and what is the file name it's data.txt so we see it search this one and then it left this one it was also first name but it was having a lower case so it neglected this one okay so it printed this one and why it printed this one because it it was having a substring named first name so that's why it printed this one the last one again it printed this one now suppose the next thing is we only want to print those words which are just the whole word and not the substring okay so we can just do grep then the flag dash w which stand for a word which we are searching then the word name and finally the file name so now we can see it just printed these two okay and neglected this one now the next question is suppose we want to print all such word not just like the word matching a pattern but also neglecting the case for that like it should also consider lower case words as the same one so for that what we can do we can just do grep test w and i i for ignore case okay so can again say first name data dot txt so now we can see it printed all these three okay so the next thing is we want to print the line number as well like it shouldn't just print the result but also show us the line number give us the more information like it is in the second line it is in the fourth line and like that only so for that what we can do we can again do grep wi and n is used for a line number okay so we can again search for a word in this file and now we can see it is also showing as the line number like this one came in the second line then the lowest case one came in the fourth line and like that only the last one came in the twelfth line okay understood so now the next thing is we want some more information from this we just don't want it to print a particular word but also give us more information regarding the line before or after it okay so for that what we can do we can just do grep and we can keep it same and for printing a line before we can just do dash b for before and how much lines we want to print before like for this match how much before lines we want to print for this tutorial i will be just going to print one line only you can try with one two three or anything okay so for one line it is going to print like the for first name it is going to print data for this one it is going to print again the data for this one it is going to print the third name here okay so that should be the ideal output for us so we can just go again so we can see for this one it printed again third name here for this one it printed data and for this one it printed data okay 
and similarly we can go with the line after it okay so when for after we are going to do a then one line then the word and then the file name okay so now it printed data after that particular thing okay you can just see and analyze okay so suppose we want to print the data before as well as after then what how can we do that for that we can just do like dash c okay so this thing is going to give you information about both of them so we can see for first name data before and after for again for this one data before and after because it was the same okay and this for final one as well we get the same thing okay now the next thing suppose we want to search not just in the one file but we want to search in every file like all the files that are present here we want to search if a particular thing is present like if first name is present in any of them print that file name or result okay so for that what we can do we can just again do the same thing first name then in this case what we are going to do we are going to do dot dash and star so we can see these were the folders so it didn't search here and this is the file name where it found the result like in the data txt it found the result at second line fourth line and twelfth line okay so we can just see now we saw that it didn't search these directories now if we want to search in these directories as well and in case directories are present inside them as well we want to search there as well like recursively then how we can do that so for that we can just do like win and r r is for recursive search okay so we can just try and add this thing now and what we need to do you can just add dot okay so this is going to do recursive search so it show in folder 2 there exists a folder 7 in which there is a file named data.txt which is having all these things and in folder 3 there exists the same thing and in folder 1 in folder 4 then there exists a data.txt file and in the home folder like main folder there exists a data.txt file okay so we can see how useful this command can be okay but you should take care in case there are like millions of files then this thing can be a little costly okay so these things can take time in case you are recursively calling and there are many 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 files in millions so it will take much time okay so now the next thing is suppose we don't want to print the results okay we just want to show the file name so for that what we can do we can just do grep w i n w i n r and then you want to just list the file name so for that you can just add l okay then what was the search string first name okay so now we can just do dot so we can see in folder 3 there exists a folder 7 where existed this file similarly for folder 3 similarly in folder 1 okay 
so these are the four places where this file exists having this particular word okay or better you can say this particular pattern okay so the next thing suppose we want to print the count like how much time this thing appeared we want to show the count so for that what we can do we can do grep dash w i n r now you can just add c c for count they are going to show you the count so you can just again add first name jeta dot txt so it is just going to show okay we forget to add dot because we were searching just in data dot txt so it showed three times but if we want to do recursively so it will show you all the documents like in these documents it didn't existed in this document it existed and three times it found similarly for this one and similarly for this one okay so we can see how much information we can get from this particular command okay so now suppose we want to search something based on a regular expression so we can just do that as well like we want to search this particular number then how we can search with the help of a regular expression so you can just add grip then dot 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 dash dot 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 in regular expression dot 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 means anything okay so any three particular characters then that should be there and then any three particular characters can be there after it so it should search this particular thing so we can just add file name so now we can see it searched for a particular pattern so that is how this command will be so much useful in case we want to find a particular pattern from a file or a set of files okay so that's all for grip command find command find command is a command line utility for walking a file hierarchy okay so find command is used for searching and locating the list of files as well as directories based on the condition that we are going to specify okay so it is going to find the files and directories and also we can perform certain actions based on that okay so we'll start with this command so firstly we are going to check whatsoever is present in the current folder so for that we can just do find dot so this is going to list all the files as well as directories that are there okay so similarly if you want to see the structure of folder one you can do like find then folder one so it is going to show you the structure of folder one okay understood so next thing is we don't want to list all the things but only the files we don't want to list the directories for that what we can do we can do like find then dot then we can specify the type so type should be f f is for file okay so it is only going to list the files now and no directories okay so similarly we can go with directories as well so for directories we can change this f to d okay so it is going to list all the directories only okay so suppose now the next thing is we don't want to randomly list the all the files but we want to list a particular file like we can see there is a file called data.txt we want to list that file and where it is present so for that we can do find then dot then type file okay and then name what is the name of the file name of the file is data dot txt so we can see it is present in these locations okay 
so that is how we can search on the basis of names similarly suppose you don't know the name and you only know something about it like it is having a data then how we can do so you can just add star here so it will give you the same result now similarly if you want to list only the txt file then how we can do that we can do like star dot txt so it is going to list all the txt files similarly if you want to list the bash files it can do dot bash so it will list the bash files okay so hope that is understood so next thing is suppose we want to list the file based on modification like suppose you want to find a file that were modified within 5 minutes or within 20 minutes or more than 20 minutes okay so we can do that as well with the help of this command so for that what we need to do till here command will be the same find dot type should be the file and then m m i n minimum minutes okay for minus 10 means within 10 minutes so you can say like modified in less than 10 minutes ago similarly if you add plus then 10 that means modified more than 10 minutes ago okay so similarly we'll check in last 10 minutes there is no as such file that has been modified but if we'll change it to plus 10 that we can see all the file will be there because most all the file were modified more than 10 minutes ago okay so similarly if you want to couple few of things like it should be modified more than 10 minutes ago but it should be modified less than 20 minutes ago then you can do like minus 20 so any file that has been modified more than 10 minutes ago but less than 20 minutes ago okay we can see no file co is coming so uh, suppose if we change it to 1000 then we can see some results okay so you can see okay similarly for days if we want to check not only on the basis of minutes but on the basis of days then we can use m time so it should be minus one means modified within a day so we can see all these files were modified within a day okay so if we do plus one that will mean the files that were modified before one days okay like not within a day but it was modified before a one day okay so similarly we can also list the file based on the size as well suppose you want to list a file based on the size like you know there exists some file that is 5 kb or 5 mb or 5 gb so you can list file based on the size as well with the help of this command so you can do like find and then dot then there should be size and what is the size suppose we want less than 1 kb so we can see all the commands so if you want to see the files having a size more than 1 kb then you can do like more than 1 kb so you can see all these files are having a size of more than 1 kb okay similarly you can do it with the help of mb for mb we are using capital m so there is just no file which is of that much size okay for your reference if you want to check for gb then it will be capital g okay only for kb it is small k for mb and gb it is capital one understood so suppose now you want to find the files which are empty you have bunch of files but you don't want to go through all the files and want to check if these files any of these files are empty they are not having any data so for that you can do like find then dot dash empty so it will list file that is empty 
so it is showing this file x is empty okay so for confirming we can just check you can see it is empty file okay so that is how we can check everything with the help of a find command now we can also list file based on permissions like you want to find a file having a permission 777 okay so it will show all the file with such a permission if you have one okay now we are done with finding a file now one more thing we can do with the help of this find command is execute something along with that okay suppose you want to find and remove the empty files then how we can do that we can do like find not empty that is going to find the empty file that is here okay we can see it has already found one and we want to like remove that then we want to do execute that is going to execute something what is that something we want to remove the file and then we need to add this as a placeholder and finally plus okay so that is going to okay what is the error okay there is no space here so we can just add a space okay so now we can see it removed the file okay so that is how this particular find command works so that's all for find command less command less command is a utility command of unix that is used to view a content of the file so now you will say that uh, we are already using cat command for viewing the content and then why do we need this less command so in case of cat command we are printing whole the content of the file but in the case of less command we are going to print the content like page by page okay so it is not going to print whole the content at once it is just going to print the content page by page so that will make it easier to load as well as process okay and along with that we can search the content with the help of this command as well okay so we can just see if we do something with the cat command like i have already made a file called data file so we can proceed with it so we can see it is loading all the content first okay from the start so it is very like junk content like if you have a very big file it will be very difficult for you to go through it okay so suppose if we use the less command okay so file started from here this is the first page okay so if you want to go to the second page or like down you can press the down arrow okay if you want to go up you can press the up arrow so that is easier suppose you want to search something in this file okay let it be lorem okay for that just add this backslash and then the content let it be lorem okay so it will show wherever lorem is present okay so there is one more way we can search with the help of question mark then again you can add suppose this time we are searching for ipsum okay so it will list all the ipsums so now you will say what is the difference why do we use slash or why do we use question mark okay so we use slash in the cases like if we are listing something from the start to the end like it will start searching from the start and go till the end okay and with the help of n we can just uh, search for the next next items okay and similarly if you want to search from the end to the start then what you can do you can just do with the help of question mark okay so one more thing is there like if you want to quit how you can quit from the file you can just press q so that will quit you out from this command okay so that's all for this command
so that's all for this command i hope you guys got to learn something new thank you so that's all for this less command pwd command pwd command stands for print working directory so as per the name it is used for printing the current working directory in which we are present okay so currently as you can see we are in the desktop so we'll try and print the current working directory so it is showing what is the location to the directory so it will always show the location from the home folder okay from the root folder you can say okay so now we'll go inside this testing unix commands folder and try and execute this command again so what should it print ideally it should print now users name desktop slash testing unix commands folder okay so we can check so it is printing the same okay so that is how this particular pwd command works stat command stat command gives us the information about the files as well as directories it is going to give us the information such as their size access permissions like user id group id their birth time and all other access related informations as well as creation information okay so for using the stat command we can just do stat and suppose we are doing with the file so we can just write the file name so it is going to give us the information about the size its permissions the users and its last access date its creation date and all such information okay so similarly you can also do the same thing with the folder so suppose we are doing for the folder one so it will give you the result for that okay so that is how this stat command works touch command touch command is a standard unix command that is used for creating a file okay so it can also be used for modifying the timestamps like we can modify the access time of a file we can modify the modified time of a file okay so why do we use this command like we are already having a cat command for the similar reason but why we are using the touch command so cat command is basically used for creating a file with content okay although we can create the file without content with the cat command as well but that is basically designed for creating a file with content okay so we are using touch for creating an empty file and it is very easy to create a empty file with this touch command also we can create a multiple files at the same time which we can't do in the cat command okay so i'll just show you for creating a file we are going to write touch then file name suppose we'll keep it first dot txt and we can press the enter and that's it okay so it created a file okay so suppose you want you to create multiple files at the same time you can go like second dot txt third dot txt and so on until you want okay and press the enter and both the files will be created okay so now the second thing why we use this command is for modification of timestamps as i already told you so how can we see like uh, the timestamps and all so we can see it with the help of a stat command as we have already learned so we can say stat then suppose this file was created previously so we will use this one data file so it will show you the stat suppose we want to change the access time then how we can change it so 
for that we can do like touch a4 access time then file name what is the file name data file.txt okay so now we can again check the stat so we can see that access time has been changed okay so this how we will be changing the access time suppose we want to change the modification time then how we can change that we can change with the help of dash m for modification then what is file name it's data file dot txt now we can again run the stat and we can see this modification time is also changed okay so that is how this particular touch command works ch mode command ch mode stands for change the mode okay so this command is basically used for changing the access permissions of files or directories okay so we have already created one document for you so these are the set of the rules that we can use to change the permissions so we will go through that so its syntax will be as follows chmod then the options option recursive will be there recursive can be uh, like for everything it will be applied and forcefully will be there and verbose okay so mode can be specified in two ways one in octal way and other in symbolic way so we'll be going through all these okay then we need to add the file name or directory name whatever we are doing okay so firstly we need to see the current permissions of a file so for seeing them what we can do we can just do like stat So we'll be taking data file in this case. So we can see these are the permissions as of now. So first three letters will be for the owner and then next three will be for the group and the last three will be for the others. Okay. So we can see that the owner is having read write permissions but no execute permission they are having similarly group and others are having only the read permissions suppose now with the help of a octal rule we want to change the permission so that in new permissions owner is having the read write as well as execute permission whereas group and others are having only the read and write permissions but no execute permission so for that how we can do that so for providing the permission suppose you want to give the read permission to the owner so for that you need to type the 4 suppose you want to give the read and write so in that case 4 plus 2 6 you can type similarly in case of all the permissions 4 plus 2 plus 1 that is 7 you can provide okay in case of write and execute permission in that case three you can provide okay so first value will be for the owner and second will be for the group and third will be for the others okay so in case you want to provide all the permissions to everyone so how you can do that you can do like seven for this seven for this and seven for this so in case of mode what you will specify you will specify seven 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 understood okay so in this case what we wanted to do we wanted to do like owner should have all the permissions so for owner it should be seven and group and others should have read and write permission so for read permission what we need for for write we need two so totally six we need okay for these as well like for group as well as other so for both of these we will be writing six six okay so what is the file name file name is data file okay so now the modes will be changed now we can again try and run the stat command so you can see so now the owner is having execute permission as well 
and both the group and others are having read and write permission okay so this is the first way in which we can use this command now the second way is the symbolic way okay so in that case we'll be using the letters instead of this numbers okay so for owner you will be using u for group you will be using g for others we will be using o and for the all we can use a okay so few operators will be needing like for adding a permission we need to use the plus sign for removing the permission or revoking the access we need to use the minus sign and for giving the exact permission will be using equal to sign okay and then comes the mode which mode we want read write or execute or any combination of those okay so now suppose we want to revoke the write permission from both the group as well as others then how we can do with the help of a symbolic command we can do like chmod then for whom we need that we need for group and others okay then what we need to do we need to remove some permission so minus sign should be there and finally what we want to revoke from them we want to revoke the right permission so for right we can just write w then the file name file name is data file so it should have removed the right permission from both of these so now we can try and run again the stat command so we can see that right permission is revoked from both the group as well as others so that is how we can use chmod command for changing the mode of a file or a directory okay so you can go through all of these that will be very helpful for you mkdir command mkdir stand for make directory so as per the name says it is used for creating a directory okay so how we can create a directory with the help of this command so you can just type mkdir and then the directory name okay so let it be mkdir tutorial okay so we can see it has created a directory and it will be empty okay so suppose you want to create a directory inside this directory then how you can create you can create like mkdir then whatsoever is the name of the directory like first you can press the enter and we can see directory will be created now suppose you want to create like bunch of directories like uh, from the start you want to create a make dir directory and then inside it also one more directory like in the one go you want to create the such of a thing okay so how you can do that you can do like mkdir and suppose i'll just name it mkdir underscore one okay so it don't exist here so then inside it maybe you want to create a first folders and how you can create that you can just do like this but it's not enough like in this case you need to provide a flag called dash p okay so that is for parent so we will be creating parent as well as childs okay so now we can press the enter so it has created this directory okay so the next question is suppose you just don't want to create a one directory inside you want to create a multiple directories so how we can do that so we'll just see mkdir then mkdir underscore one and there will be like you want to create two three directories inside so just open the curly bracket and name the directories like second comma third 
okay as of now i'll be using only two you can choose as many as you like and now we'll be closing the bracket and we'll be pressing the enter so you can see two more directories are created so that is how mkdir command works hope that is very well understood rmdir command rmdir stands for remove directory so this command is used for removing the empty directories in case the directory is empty we can remove it with the help of rmdir command okay so let's take the example if we want to remove this first directory then how we can remove it we can remove with the help of rmdir then directory name so it should be mkdir underscore tutorial then first okay so it will remove that directory so now we can see it has removed that directory okay so that is how this particular rmdir command works rm command rm command stands for remove this command is used for removing the files as well as directories okay we can also remove symbolic links and many other things with the help of this command okay so why we use this command instead of rmdir because it is providing us more functionality than that like we can also remove files along with directories and also there is no as such condition that the directory should be empty okay so we can also remove non empty directories okay so how we can use that so firstly we'll be creating some empty file okay here yeah. empty file dot txt okay so in order to remove this particular file then how we can do with the help of a rm command we can do like rm empty file we can just provide the file name it will delete this particular file okay so we can see it has deleted this file okay so suppose if we try to do rmdir command on this thing what will happen mk dir underscore one so directory is not empty but if we want to remove this particular thing we can also do with the help of rm command then how we can do that we can just type rm then we should add a flag called recursive that will recursively delete everything and then mk dir underscore one okay so it will delete whole the folder and whatever is inside that okay so we can also try few more things like we can just create few more files empty two dot txt okay so two files are there so we can also remove multiple files as well so rm then apt then empty file okay so we can see it has removed this thing okay so one more operation we will try with the help of this command is suppose we are firstly creating some empty file again okay so it is created some file so now we want to like show some interactive session for executing such a command like suppose it after writing rm command and this file name it shouldn't delete as such because that can be dangerous sometime as well so we want to add a interactive session in it okay so we can add empty file so it now it will ask first that if we want to remove this particular file so if you say n it won't remove that file okay so similarly if you say yes then it will remove that file okay so that is how we can use this rm command for deleting the files as well as directories okay so hope that is very well understood so that's all for this particular command mv command mv command stands for move command so as per the name this command is used for moving the files as well as directories from source to destination okay so along with that 
this command is also used for renaming the files as well as directories okay so we'll see how we can perform such a operation with the help of move command okay so firstly suppose you want to change a name of file or a directory then how you can do that you can do with the help of move then the directory name maybe if you are doing for directory and then whatever name you want to keep so you can do like mk dir so this command is going to change the name of mk dir tutorial to mk dir okay we can try and execute that so we can see it has changed the name of that directory so it will not change the content so content will remain the same and only the name is changed okay so similarly if you want to do for a file you can do the similar thing like third to so you can say fourth dot txt so it will change the name of that file okay and now suppose we want to move this particular file in this folder then how we can do that we can do like move then what is the source source is fourth dot txt and the destination is mktir so now we can press the enter so it will move that particular file in this folder right now suppose you are moving one more file and in this case this file is having the same name as this file let it be fourth and let the content of file to be one two three four five okay so this file is empty right so now if we try to move this file to a particular folder then what will happen if it is already having the same file we'll try and execute that so we can do like so we can see it has moved that file to this folder and we'll check for a content and content is gone so it is going to override that particular file in this folder right so in case we want to check if a particular file exists inside or anything before moving then how we can proceed with that we can do like let it be fourth again the same name now in this case we will try and have this i flag okay then fourth to mk dir so it will show that do you want to override that particular file okay so in this case you do have some restriction so you will know that a particular file is already there okay so you can just say n for no and it won't be overridden right okay so in case it's not uh, that is the same name and some different name then we'll try this particular thing in this case it will directly move as there is no as such file inside this folder right okay so there is one more thing that we can see with the help of this command like if you want to see that what operation has happened on a file like move in this case we have a v tag and suppose we want to move this compiled file.txt maybe okay so we want to move in this mkdir right so after moving that it will show you what has happened like this particular thing has moved to mkdir slash the file name means inside this particular folder right 
so that is how we can perform different set of operations with the help of this move command so that's all for this move command history command history command is a command line utility of unix systems that is used for showing the previously used commands okay so it is going to list out all the previously used commands okay so we can do like history so it will show you the recently used command suppose you want to show the commands from any number like the first command used so you can do like one suppose it is one so it will list out all the commands from one right similarly in case you want to show the last 10 commands in that case you can do like 10 okay so it will show you previously used 10 commands right there is one more thing that we can do with the help of a history command right so we'll just again type history and we'll check these are the bunch of commands suppose you want to execute some particular command let it be this command so we are currently in this home folder so doing this thing will get us into this particular testing unix commands folder so how we can do that we can do with the help of exclamation mark then the number so 606 okay so it will execute that particular command and we are in this testing unix command folder right so that is how we can use this particular command there is one more way we can use this history command right suppose you want to execute some command like you want to execute history command only right so what you can say you can say h i or anything h or h i s so it will start matching from last to first okay so wherever it will found something starting with h i s so it will execute that particular thing right you can see that it has executed this particular command okay so one more thing like in the first case where we executed history one so it listed bunch of commands okay so in case we don't have a time and commands are so much that we can't go through each and every command so in that case we can just press control and r okay so it will start reverse search that is also like a history only so in reverse search you can type like whatever command you are searching for like cd we have searched so it will try to match with the history okay so it is matching with this particular command as of now like it has found cd with this command so this is the only command we were searching for okay so in case we want to search for anything else you can do like mv okay then it found this particular match as of now okay like that also you can search for a particular command and then execute that right so that is how history makes our life so much easier for finding and running a particular command okay so that's all for history command clear command clear command is used for clearing the screen of the terminal or the shell you can say okay so suppose we have executed some sort of commands like let it be history command so it has occupied most of the space in our terminal let's execute it again okay so our screen is full right suppose we want to clear the whole screen in that case what we can do one option is we can just keep on pressing enter and it will clear out the screen but the other option that we can use is this clear command so we can do like clear 
so it will clear out whole the screen right so there are two ways that we can use this command one is with this clear option and other with the help of control plus l you can just press both the keys control plus l then that will also do the same job okay so that is how clear command works man command man stands for manual okay so i believe this is one of the most important command as per my perspective okay so this command is used for getting information about all the commands okay so this is having a set of manuals of every command like how we can use that particular command and what are the flags that a particular command is having okay so that's why this command is that important right so let's start using this command so suppose we want the manual of ls command so we can do like man ls okay so it will give you all the description about ls command okay so name of the command then how we can use that command and more description about it and all the set of flags that are available right okay so that is how we can get all the information about this particular command so we can press q for exiting right so similarly we can try and check out manual of grip command maybe so it will show you how we can use this particular grip command right so we can use set of features as well like we can use forward slash then we can provide any argument like grip so it will search for you right so that is how we can use this particular man command okay so by this we complete our tutorial as well as this course introduction to unix commands okay so i hope you enjoyed this course very much and go to learn something new okay so i'll take a leave now and see you guys in my other courses thank you